In previous years I was invited by the Panzer Museum monster and here you can see one of their many Mara fighting vehicles. Before we take a closer look at the Mara and peek also a bit inside, a short update on the latest news that interrupted my holidays and led to this video. On 5th January 2023, Germany announced that it would send Marders to Ukraine, according to some sources about 40 to begin with. This comes after about 10 months repeatedly denying such requests. The situation was changed after France announced that it would send AMX-10 RC. The AMX-10 is a wheel tank destroyer or armored recon vehicle, depending on who you ask. It is lightly armored but has a 105mm gun that is also used in the Leopard 1. Meanwhile, the United States also agreed to send the Bradley fighting vehicle to Ukraine. So time to take a look at the Marder and how it compares to similar equipment used by the Russians and Ukrainian armed forces, most notably the BMP-2. First of some basic information on the Marder fighting vehicle. By the way, Marder means Martin in English. It was introduced in 1971 in the German Bundeswehr. It was only produced until 1975 and a total a bit more than 2100 were built. Although over the years it was constantly upgraded. Its base armament consists of a 20mm auto cannon and a 7.62mm machine gun. The crew consists of three people, a commander, a gunner and a driver. Additionally it can carry up to six or seven fully equipped Panzergrenadiere, depending on the variant. In comparison to the Soviet or Russian BMP-1 and BMP-2, the Mara is larger, heavier and not amphibious. But more on those details later. Now one question arises, what variant of the Mara will be sent to Ukraine? Because there are many different variants of the Mara as you can see from this variant tree from the Panzer Museum Munster. Be aware that this tree is only up to the A5, whereas the newest variant is the A5A1 from 2010-2011. Well, the most likely variant is the A3 variant model, according to Kampfwiffkette or Short Ketty, who is one of the leading German experts when it comes to armored fighting vehicles. So let us take a closer look at this variant. Nearly all existing models were upgraded to the A3 variant, as source notes 2079 were upgraded until 1998. The most important new feature differentiating the A3 version from the predecessors A1 and A2 was the upgraded armor. The turret and hull received an upgraded armor protection developed on the background of developing threats. The new add-on armor package consists of rolled homogeneous armor steel fitted as standoff armor elements on the upper and lower bow of the hull. On the hull sides, in the rear ramp, on the hull roof and on the turret. The add-on armor elements were fitted on shock absorbing mounts evenly leveled to the basic armor of the vehicle. As you can see here, the A1 on the left side has no skirts and other features that the A3 on the right side has. These upgrades increase the overweight of the Mada by 5.5 metric tons. Now one might think that the A4 and A5 variant might be significantly better than A3. This is only partially correct. First, the A4 is basically just a command variant of the A3 with better communication systems. Second, the A5 is better since it received various upgrades, but only 74 vehicles were upgraded, so it is very unlikely that Germany will part with them. The A5 has a mine protection system and improved crew protection like spall liners. Additionally, maintaining them could be a hassle since the upgrade contained 3450 new parts. Among the upgrades was the suspension since the weight was further increased. Combined with the low numbers this could be a serious bottleneck. Currently the Bundeswehr feeds about 350 Pumas and about 270 Marders. Yet back in 2013 the Marder was still the mainstay of the Panzergrenadiere. Up till the fielding of the new Schützenpanzer Puma AIV, the Marder 1A3 and its variants will continue to serve as the main weapon system of the Bundeswehr's Panzergrenadiertruppe. So let us look at the various capabilities of the Mada 1A3 now. Similar to various other infantry fighting vehicles like the BMPs or the Bradley, the Mada can also be equipped with anti-tank guided missiles. This would generally be the French Milan. There are variants of the Mada that are equipped with the Spike LR 
Yet Israel currently does not allow these to be exported to Ukraine. One main issue here is that the Milan has to be mounted and dismounted from the Mars turret, since the vibrations during the movement could damage the weapon. This is in contrast to the BMP-2. Here the missiles can be loaded rather into the launcher without leaving the vehicle. Additionally, the sites for the missile launcher are inside the vehicle as well. Now the loading needs a bit of an explanation. You see the launcher in the center of the turret. It would be turned to the side and then turned upwards. So either the commander or a gunner via the hatches could load it without exposing themselves too much. You also need to consider that the hatches open forward. So inside might be a bit of an overstatement, but the loader would be not really exposed. Now the main gun of the Mara is a 20mm auto cannon. That is, well, not great, not terrible. It comes with high explosive rounds and high velocity armor piercing discarding saber rounds. The later should be able to penetrate BTRs, BMP1s and BMP2s frontally up to 2000 meters, yet the more modern BMP3 should be safe. The main issue with the Marder's gun is that it is not stabilized, so firing during movement might look impressive, but the chances of hitting something are low. Against unexperienced troops it might still create enough suppression, against experienced troops likely less so. Of course. There are tactics like fire and movement as shown here from a World War II Panzer Tactics video that can mitigate this problem. So that one half of the vehicles provides cover against the enemy while the other half moves forward and vice versa. As discussed previously with Mikolas Moran aka the Chieftain on my second channel, thermal imaging systems are a game changer and according to my sources all models were upgraded with the thermal imaging system WBGX. This system might be outdated by modern standards, but it's clearly better than no thermal imaging system. Of course, there are two caveats here. First, it could be that these thermal imaging systems are worn and in bad shape. The Bundeswehr had some serious issues lately, like a lack of ammunition. Second, it could also be the opposite, namely that some models are already upgraded with newer thermal imaging systems. Sadly, I could not find information in my sources so far. Additionally, those systems could be stripped, upgraded or exchanged by the German industry as well. In terms of mobility, the Mara has some drawbacks compared to the BMP-2. First off, it is generally heavier. Yes, it has wider tracks, but according to Tankola, this can't outbalance everything. The BMP-2's thin tracks might be a liability for some other platforms, but thanks to the compressed design of the BMP-2, it only exerts a ground pressure of 0.65 kg per square centimeter. When combat loaded, the Marder 1 with its much wider tracks still cannot escape the fact that it is about two times heavier than the BMP-2. The Marder 1 exerts 0.83 kg per square centimeter of ground pressure. Be aware that this might be even more depending on the variant of the Marder used as a base reference here. The 1977 variant had already 0.80 kg per square centimeter ground pressure. Second, the Mara, unlike the BMP-2, is not amphibious. Yet where the Mara shines is the maximum speed of 65 km per hour. Now the initiated might know that this is also the maximum speed of the BMP-2 as well, and indeed it is. Yet for the Mara, this is the maximum speed forward and in reverse as well. This allows for far greater tactical flexibility on the battlefield. Meanwhile, the BMP-2, according to the manual, has just 10.6 km per hour at 2600 revolutions per minute. This means the maximum reverse speed could be a bit higher, yet not by a large margin. According to Tankolat, it should be 11.7 km per hour. So in this case, the Mada has a clear edge. Now, unlike the BMPs, the Mada is quite a heavy beast and the A3 was specifically upgraded to withstand 30mm cannon fire like that from the BMP2, BMP3 or BTR-82. As usual, there are some caveats. First of this protection was added a few decades ago, so modern 30mm ammunition might likely penetrate. Second, the protection is only sufficient enough for the frontal armor. As usual, the side armor is rather weak.
Besides these hard factors, there are also some soft factors. Now, since the Mata is built to carry soft targets, namely Panzer Grenadier inside, although they might disagree about the soft, ergonomics as usually is an important factor. The BMP has lower height, thus having a lower target profile, but this means it is less comfortable. This is not just a comfort issue, since over time this likely lowers the passengers' fighting capabilities. As such, for longer deployments, the crew and passengers of the Mata are clearly better off than in a BMP. Furthermore, Katie notes, Another advantage of the Mata's ergonomics is the faster dismounting and general willingness to get into the vehicle rather than right behind or on top of it, which makes breaks in into enemies' positions quicker. Another related issue here is visibility. Tankula did a comparison here. The commander of the BMP-2 is only given a miserly two general vision periscopes to supplement his ubiquitous TKN-3B periscope. Not only is it less than what the gunner gets, it's also much less than what the commander's NATO's counterpart gets. The commander of a Marder 1, for instance, is furnished with a generous array of five periscopes covering 160 degrees frontally. However, it must be mentioned that the coppola rotates, so unlike the gunner seated beside him and the commander of a Mata 1, the commander of a BMP-2 can spin the coppola around to see all 360 degrees around him. It is not as convenient as being able to glance in whichever direction at leisure, but the overall effect is similar, and at least the commander of a BMP-2 has a greater field of view than 160 degree frontal arc. For a general talk about the major differences in philosophies behind the Mata and the BMP series, be sure to check out this video with Jens Wehner on my second channel. Last but not least, we also need to talk about the dreaded ALM combination, namely availability, logistics and maintenance. Cathy notes that the Mata is available not only in Germany, but in a few other countries as well. This is in contrast to other vehicles like the Swedish CV90 or the British Warrior. Those two vehicles were produced in large numbers as well, of about 1000 each, yet unlike to the Mata, there are generally no successor vehicles ready yet. Back to the Mata, this means there's a large number of spare parts, spare vehicles, personnel and other capacities available for the whole supply chain, as well as training and maintenance. Of course, since Germany now finally decided to send Maras, which were specifically built to accompany the Leopard tanks. The question needs to be asked again, what about the German Leopards for Ukraine? Well, the German Social Democrats have that covered already. Meanwhile, the Social Democratic Party of Germany defense policy spokesman Wolfgang Helmich currently rules out German delivery of Leopard 2 tanks. These are attack tanks. What Ukraine needs are tanks for defense. I mean, there's actually not just one, but three different Maras that are rather suited for defensive duties, and one of them you can see also in the Panzermuseum Monster. But those are tank destroyers of the Wehrmacht and not infantry fighting vehicles. Then again, some Russian sources state that this is the Great Perthic War 2.0, and the German Social Democrats are well known for their empathy when it comes to Russian sensibilities. As a final summary, I will quote Katty again. The Mata impresses mainly by its numbers, serviceability, mobility, armor and ergonomics. However, it has deficiency in its main armament due to its age and its anti-tank capability due to the blockade of Israel. As a final note, sorry that I did not do a live stream as originally planned, but I decided to edit slash write a new book during my time off. More soon. I hope you had a good start into 2023. Thank you to the Panzer Museum Monster for inviting me. Thanks to Katie and Tankolat for answering various questions. Thank you for watching and see you next time.